So you really want to know why I chose Flutter over something like React Native or Kotlin Native? I'm going to let you know. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Kilo Loco. And today I'm going to be talking about why I decided to go with Flutter instead of going with something like, you know, React Native, going with something like Xamarin, Kotlin, all these other things, Ionic, whatever you want to bring up. I looked into it and I'm going to let you know why I decided to go with Flutter because, you know, it just made the most sense for me. So I got into Flutter in August of 2018 and Flutter was still a very new concept. It had just come out like I think they already had their official like 1.0 release like a month or two prior to that. And there was all this hype just being generated around Flutter, right? So I decided to take a look into it. Now, at this time, I was kind of looking for a cross-platform situation. I was, I was, I was dabbling. I was dabbling. I was trying to see you know, what's out there. And since Flutter was blowing up, you know, it had all that hype behind it. I started to take a look into it. And, you know, as I started diving deeper and I started looking at why people are using it, it started to make more and more sense to me. So right off the bat, I found out that it wasn't done in JavaScript. And everybody's like, hey, well, you can do everything in JavaScript. JavaScript is the best language. And it really turns out that nobody likes JavaScript. That's why there are so many frameworks. Like there's like three different frameworks that probably came out within the time that I recorded this video and uploaded it to the Internet. So nobody really likes JavaScript. They just keep trying to mix and match it with all kinds of different technologies that was never meant for. And you guys just kind of keep forcing everything into to JavaScript, trying to make it work for everything. And, and it's just a poorly written language. It's a bad language, guys. But if you don't agree with that sentiment, then that's all fine. You know, you might love JavaScript and more power to you. But I personally went through trying to learn JavaScript when I was first starting out as a developer. Um, I started out trying to do web development. And when I hit JavaScript, it was just too complex. The syntax just seemed too foreign to me and I just couldn't learn it. So ever since then, I kind of have this bad taste in my mouth for JavaScript. Uh, and I, I really don't like working with it if I don't have to, but I will eventually, you know, go along and pick it up as another language, but it's just like, not my go-to. So as I'm looking more into Flutter, I'm starting to go through the documentation, right? And I just see, you know, typical Google. They are documenting everything very, very well. So damn well. I love their Firebase documentation, but that's different. But yeah, I just love the fact that the documentation for Flutter seems so straightforward. It was really well done. They had tutorials. They were they were specifically creating things for iOS developers. I'm an iOS developer. I mean, I'm going to do other stuff, but mainly iOS developer right now. So jumping into something like Flutter didn't seem like it was going to be that hard of a hill to climb. You know, it just it just seemed like it was being made easy for the developer to, you know, just jump on board and kind of pick it up and get going with it. And it really was, you know, the documentation was really well done. They had great tutorials on how how to, you know, understand some of the concepts of working with Flutter, whether you came from an iOS background or if you came from an Android background and I think they even had something if you were coming from React Native. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that but I think that they kept referencing React Native so that you can also understand how to get into Flutter if you knew React Native. So I keep looking into Flutter and I just keep finding all these good things and the fact that it's backed by a huge company it just means a, a whole lot when you have a big company backing something like that. And yes, Google has Kotlin and yes, Google has Go, but it's just the fact that Google itself is backing Dart as a language. You know, they created it and then backing Flutter as well. It's just very interesting. And, you know, you really can't lose. And chances are, if you're a betting person, you know what? You're going to put your money on the big companies. You're going to put your money on the big companies to, to go out there and succeed at what they're trying to do. They have you know, so many different people working on the Flutter framework, it's crazy. And just the fact that, you know, there's so much support from Google, it's just, you know, how could I go wrong with choosing this? So just seeing that it is supported by Google and that they're trying to push it out there and they're saying, hey, try this new thing. 
It's very enticing to try that new thing. So you know what I ended up doing? I decided to download the damn thing. I wanted to test it out. I wanted to see how it worked. I wanted to see how easy it really was to get up and running. And to my surprise, they made it extremely easy. The hardest part about getting up and running with Flutter was literally just downloading the different IDEs. So you had to make sure that Xcode was downloaded. You know, I already had to download it. Android Studio was downloaded. And then I decided to actually do all my coding in Visual Studio. So that was actually an extra step that I decided, but I wanted to do all my work in Visual Studio because I, you know, I did some research and it just seemed like a better IDE for me. But yeah, once you get all that stuff downloaded, it's only a matter of of a few keystrokes to get up and running with a brand new Flutter project, and that was super amazing. Now, going back over to something like Kotlin, or going back over to something like React Native, it was just a little bit tougher for somebody that was in my position because there was all kinds of dependencies that you had to download, and you had to, you know, maneuver all these different things and you know flutter didn't really have any of that so it was much easier for me to go in and start a brand new project with flutter get up and running with an actually working project you know their test project and just you know try it out so pretty much low barrier of entry that's really going to get a lot of people on board so i'm taking a look around i'm playing with their starter app now i gotta admit dart looks just like javascript so it was still a learning curve for me, but anybody that knows JavaScript, they're going to feel comfortable coding in Dart. And I also admit that the way that Flutter actually does things, you know, using declarative UI and things like that, it was a really new concept to me, but it's not too hard to grasp. And once again, just having that starter project, being able to show you kind of how everything's working together, low barrier of entry. So after playing with that project, I felt pretty comfortable with it. I liked it. I liked Flutter. It was really nice for me. And what I also liked was that it's still something that's so new. And I liked that I could just, you know, continue to grow with Flutter as it started to grow. You know, I was coming in kind of like, not necessarily on ground zero, but I was coming in before like it becomes a huge thing that everybody's jumping into. So I could kind of grow with the community. I can grow with the framework of Flutter and kind of watch it evolve and I can be part of the community that ends up helping all the other developers like you if you're interested in Flutter and I can actually provide content for you guys. So that was also a huge benefit because I wanna kinda of come in on the ground floor. I kinda of wanna be able to help people out and start producing content as early as possible for anybody that's looking for it. But the number one reason why I went with Flutter was Fuchsia. So you might be saying, what's Fuchsia? Well, Fuchsia is an operating system that might be making its way onto Google devices, cell, cell phone devices, you know, your toaster devices, whatever. It's going to be on everything potentially. And what Google's kind of saying, but not saying is that Fuchsia would actually be running on Flutter. You would be making Fuchsia apps, which is potentially a operating system that can replace Android. I'm not going to get into an argument about you on whether it's going to replace Android or not. I'm just saying that's that's a potential thing that that can be out there. OK, but if there's a different operating system that's going to replace Android and I can start building apps from day one, you know what? Sign me up. I'm jumping on board because right now there hasn't been any talk about Kotlin being able to make it onto Fuchsia, but Fuchsia is also still like five years away from ever seeing the light of day. But I just want to be prepared. You know, I want to be prepared. I want to have that stability. I want to make sure that I have a job in the future if I need a job. Right. So I know that it's not a solid argument for why I chose Flutter. And to be honest, you know, you can go with Kotlin native. You can go with React native. You can go with Ionic. You can go with Xamarin. You can do all these things, whatever makes sense to you. But these are the reasons that made most sense for me. Great documentation, easy to get up and running, backed by a huge company, Google, coming in near the ground floor, starting off early in the community, and then the fact that it's going to be handling fuchsia in the future, you know, stability for me and my family. You can't beat that. 
Now, I'm not saying that Flutter is better than any of the other cross-platform frameworks. I'm just saying that it was better for me. It made the most sense for me. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to learn all those other frameworks too. It just seemed that Flutter was an easier step for me in my position to get into cross-platform development. It seemed easier than getting into React Native. It seemed easier than getting into Kotlin Native. It seemed way easier than Xamarin. And then Ionic, I, I mean... I mean, to each their own, but whatever. I'm not saying that it's better than any of these. It just made the most sense for me. Now, if any of this makes sense for you, then I would definitely recommend checking out Flutter. It's definitely worth your time. Take a look at it. Get into at least the starter app and just play around with it. I promise that you're going to have a good time. It's really fun. I like it. You probably going to like it, too. But that's going to be it for today, guys. Thank you for watching the video. Make sure you subscribe. It really, really brings joy to my heart. And make sure you go out there and you keep coding passionately. Later.